Other hints that are important for you to remember is the performance bands. The performance bands ensure that you are reaching yourself to the highest level that you can possibly achieve. Question your answers and see if it is a basic, superficial, detailed or comprehensive. So when you're doing trial essays and trial questions at school, make sure you see and ask your teacher, uh, which level am I at? If I'm at basic, let's try and get to superficial. If I'm sound, let's try and get to detailed. If I'm working at a detailed um, level, let's work to a comprehensive level so that we can get the highest level of achievement that we possibly can. Ensure when you write down and demonstrate to the marker that you have gained knowledge over a two year period. Anyone can pick up an essay and anyone can pick up the HSC exam and actually do it. But what the markers want to see is that you have actually studied for two years. The information that you are providing to them on those essays and answers is for a two year period. They want you to include all the key terms and all your industry knowledge from your work placement, from the knowledge that you have actually accrued over doing your programs and doing your external internal functions to working in the classroom, looking at all those practical experiences that you have done, all the role modelling that you have done, all the, all the discussion times that you have actually received. It's really important to make sure that all that is compassed into the time frame that you have used to answer your questions. Another point that we've found is if you double check back to the multiple choice questions, they sometimes give you some hints of, of your short answer questions and actually enable you to provide you with some of the industry knowledge and terminology that's required for you. Please take, make sure that you allocate your time very wisely in this section. Provide 45 minutes to ensure that the questions are answered fully. Do not spend too long on any one question and never give a response that someone who has not studied the course can provide on that HSC response question. The HSC examiners require you to ensure that they see that you have studied this course for two years. Not just picked up the essay question from someone that has not studied the course and then answered it. This does not enable the markers to see how clever you are, so you have to make sure that you show them how clever you are to answer those questions to the best of your ability. Extended response questions. In section 3, question 21 is a compulsory question to do. You will hear your teachers constantly say question 21, make sure you do it, make sure you're aware of all the develop and update specific knowledge and industry examples that you need for this question. It is one extended response question and it is worth 15 marks. When you go into section four, you will see that you have the choice. And I can't stress enough from where we have spoken before about only answering the one strand that you have actually studied. So if you have studied commercial cookery, you will answer question 22. If you have studied food and beverage, you will answer question 23. And if you have studied accommodation services, you will answer question 24. Your teachers will constantly say to you, you are answering question 21 and question 22. Or your teacher could be saying to you, you're answering question 21 and 23, or 21 and 24. Now in question 21, I've got an example here for you. It states, it's a few, as I said, 15 marks. Allow yourself about 25 minutes for this question. In the rubric, it asks you to do demonstrate knowledge and understanding relevant to the question, communicate ideas and information using relevant workplace examples and industry terminology, and present a logical and cohesive response. Now, that is really important that you take note of all those three things if you want to get the highest level results from the question answer that you're going to be doing. Question 21 states, justify the importance of implementing environmental sustainable work practices in the hospitality industry when using materials, energy, equipment and associated consumables. Those three things, now when we break this essay down we look at four things in the actual question. The word justify, so that means we've got to provide examples to the question. Importance of implementing, so importance why is it important? Next one, implementing environmental sustainable work practices. How are we going to implement them? What are the environmental sustainable work practices? 
and using the three examples using materials, energy, equipment and associated consumables. Now that question is a very good question in regard to the topical nature of what is happening in the media and within the industry at the moment. It is a possible question that you could get similar to that in the HSC. So you have to make sure that you break that down, provide definitions of the word environmental sustainable, sustainability, uh, sustainable work practices, also implementing. What is the word implementing mean? Implementing means on how you're going to distribute that or how you're going to provide for that in the industry. When you're looking at things such as materials, we're going to be looking at the goods or the materials that you're usually using in your hospitality industry. Energy, you're going to be looking at the energy sources that you're using, whether it be water, whether it be gas, whether it be electricity. Also, and then the third part is the equipment and associated consumables. How are you using those in your actual industry? So the equipment could be the use of a combi oven, the use of a dishwasher that's using higher energy levels or reduced water in that, using products or natural products that you're actually using in the industry. So when you break that down, you can see that it's very important for you to actually ensure that you've got full definitions and responses that are going to answer that question correctly. Hints in this section are very important. Remembering that if you do yourself a draft, to make sure your draft is actually in your booklet. Allow yourself to highlight the questions as we have done previously, making sure that you have studied the correct section, making sure that you circle and provide definitions in there. Don't rewrite the question because it's just an actual waste of time. Use all the writing book space that you have and if needed ask for more booklets because remember some people will write larger writing, some will have smaller, so you need to make sure you provide yourself with enough writing material. Students won't be penalised for the response of your excessive length but they might write less or might more than what is expected or their response will be marked on their actual merits. So just make sure that you don't waffle too much, make sure that you provide the information that's required, provide those industry uh, quotes and industry examples. It's always really handy for you to refer back to your work placement and provide those informations as, information as well. The rubric that I talked about previously in question 21 I started reading for you is really important. That provides a marking scale, as part, or actually provides information for the marking scale for you, for your answer. All questions are always double marked, but the rubric is crucial to your extended response question. Know and understand the rubric. You must demonstrate knowledge and understanding relevant to the question. So that's providing detailed information. You must communicate your ideas and the information using relevant workplace examples and industry terminology. So where it says workplace examples, remember all of you have done 70 hours workplace to be able to ensure that you have met the requirements of the Board of Studies. Once you've done that, in those 70 hours, you have got a multitude of work placement examples that you can actually put down. It's very, very important that you put down what you know and what you have seen and what you have done. Bring it back, bring your information back to the rubric at all times. Ensure that, again, your industry terminology is there. Remember, the rest of the exam has got some actual references for you to use. And present in a logical and cohesive response. Remember that the person that is reading this needs to know and needs to understand that you are logically answering that question and that they can actually understand what is actually happening. Make sure that you reread that and if you need to, add extra information into that area. 